Okay. Uh, welcome. I think I have to <laughs> introduce myself. Um, well, my name is Floor Terra. I'm going to tell you a little bit out about responsible disclosure. Um, the events that have been happening here in the Netherlands the developments and a little bit about the problems uh, in uh, trying to, to, to get a responsible disclosure policy implemented in the government and a lot of companies. A little bit about myself. Uh, I like uh, privacy, security and politics. Um, also, I really hate politics. <laughs> A bit of a mixed feeling. I, I, lots of problems I don't like, but the challenges, challenges of politics I like. And I think the last about two years I've been working on trying to improve the, the relationship between hackers, governments, and companies. Uh, yeah, mostly I've, partly because uh, I myself have you know, tried to report some security issues and see uh, yeah, what happens. Um, luckily I've not encountered really bad stuff for myself, but I've seen some th things and seen some, some things in my surroundings that I thought needed improvement. So I think this was an observation of mine that, that really triggered uh, yeah, my response for myself: for there should be some, uh, there, sh there should be some change. The risk of abusing a security problem can be lower than reporting it. That that's a reality we live in. That if you find a security problem, there's basically two things that 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 are important. You can try to not get caught. That's pretty easy if you just find it and maybe mess around a little bit. Chances of getting caught are almost zero in practice. When you contact a company to report a security issue, chances of getting caught are significantly higher. Uh, <laughs> this is just an observation. That it's, uh, uh, at least if you assume that when you go to a company and introduce yourself, then the chances of getting caught are higher than if you don't. That's, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then there's the problem of how does the company uh, respond when you report an issue? Because there's a lot of in uncertainty in, in how companies uh, respond. Some companies respond really well. Others uh, respond horribly, and uh, just to be sure, I talk about companies, also mean government and all kinds of organizations. Um, there's just a huge variety of responses, and that's bad because if you want to decide uh, if if you want to report a problem or not, well, it's good to know what to expect. And I think the uncertainty is coming from two, two directions. This is the, the classical uh, black hat, uh, white hat uh, division. And in reality, you have almost everything is gray. There's no pure white, no pure black, and, and lots of things in the middle. Just don't pay attention to the ex exact location and, and, and order I put things in. but give a sampling of some terms. Uh, everything is in the middle. There's no holy uh, white hat or no devil black hat that only does bad stuff. But for both companies and for hackers themselves, they don't know exactly where they are located. And, and, and hackers might think of themselves as white hat, we're doing it for good. and they don't see, but maybe the company thinks differently. So where do you draw the line? What's, what's acceptable and what's not? And to get some, uh, some certainty about what to expect when, when you're reporting on a security issue, there has to be at least 
something that looks like a line. It's not a gray area, but you have to be, be somewhat uh, sure that when you report something, you're not on the black side of the line, the company will probably think that it's okay. So that's the first thing I want to fix. And if you uh, look at all the laws and, and regulations and you say, well, let's try to define a really tight gray area that almost resembles a line, end up something like this. You can always do nothing if you're a hacker and you don't want to cross the line. So this one problem, of one direction I want to go is just uh, narrowing the, the, the gray area to give more certainty. But this is not, for a lot of people, not an acceptable situation because then it's basically all the time you get, no, you, you can't do that. It's not acceptable. So there's another issue uh, I want to solve. I just want to acknowledge the, the value of hackers and convince companies and governments to do the same and shift the, the, the almost uh, border to the black side. It allow a little bit more uh, from hackers and get value from that. Uh, if you don't allow anything, there's nobody that, that can say, well, I found a, on some security issue because they most definitely have crossed the line. <coughs> Uh, so you have to give some room uh, to the hackers to benefit from that. And another issue um, that that yeah that that's almost uh, that overlaps uh, a lot with the uncertainty, but I think there's a special attention. There's lots of young hackers who don't yeah. They have developed a taste for, for, for hacking. They, yeah, it's really interesting, just messing around with computers and you can do all kinds of stuff that your friends can, cannot and you can brag about it. But they don't necessarily have the, the, the knowledge about the impact of what they're doing, uh, the, the, the understanding of society, what's, what's desirable behavior of them. They just want to mess around and that's fine by itself, there are kids, kids are supposed to do that. Problem is that the, uh, quite a few kids can go quite far and get pulled to the black side. That's mainly because the chances of getting caught uh, are lower if you abuse than if you do honest things with it. And I think these kids deserve a little bit uh, special attention and are, are always in the back of my head when I think about what you should do, uh, should you reward, should you not. I want to to push or pull these kids to the white side to, to let them know that they can do the, all the cool stuff or most of the cool stuff and still just do, yeah, contribute positively to society instead of DDoSing and, and whatever. So, um, trying to re uh, redefine the, the border. Uh, there's been quite a few developments uh, and I want to take you uh, through them. Uh, just give a short history of the, the recent developments. I think a nice starting point of the, the story is Lektober. Um, it's probably most of you have heard about it, um, but is there anybody who hasn't heard about Lektober? Okay, I'll, I'll give a really short uh, explanation then. Uh, Breno de Winter, journalist, uh, announced that he would have uh, in, a, in the month October one security issue a day and, and publish about it. And people got upset, annoyed, all kinds of emotions. Uh, one thing was really clear, there are a lot of security issues. But for me, the, the problem it showed was also that some of the, the security issues that were found were reported, uh, at least in a, 
a, a pretty nice way. Uh, it, it was, most of the problems weren't abused. Um, and still, the reactions from the companies varied quite a lot. Some companies responded well, others threatened to sue or uh, report the hacker to the police or a huge variety of different reactions. Um, but it was a cl quite public demonstration of, of how hackers uh, were treated because Brando Winter would call out all the companies that reacted badly or at least in his opinion. It's hard to judge from the outside what happened. But, um, so that was a, a trigger in, in, in for a lot of people to, to see that, wow, that's really a problem. Or at least you can point back to it and see, well, it's happened there and there and there and there. So from there, and, and this is a bit of a, a practical uh, uh, thing that if for the people who went to uh, the presentation of Peter Rogar last night, uh, he talked about politics, uh, hackers and hacker politics. Um, I went uh, together with uh, a friend of mine to uh, The Hague to talk to a politician uh, about what to do with yeah, de developments like this. And from that was um, a motion from Wasila Hashi and Aryan Al Facet, and basically the, the, it was uh, uh, yeah they asked the government to, uh, to search for a better way uh, to use the knowledge of hackers without uh, hackers falling under criminal law. Um, well, that that was a really nice starting point, and and for people who want to get involved in politics, it was a really fast and immediate and clear result because I think this was the day after we visited that this was, uh, uh, they, they put this uh, in the, the, the Tweede Kamer and it was accepted. So now the government had to search for a better way to use knowledge of hackers without yeah, criminal law getting involved. And from this, that come, well, there's a bit of a, a, a sidetrack here. Was that telecommunication companies in the Netherlands, they, decide, they, they saw some developments and they thought, well, we're going to try to take the lead. So uh, Nederland ICT, uh, it's a big organization of IT companies, announced that there must be big uh, telecommunication companies here would adopt a responsible disclosure program, basically a statement um, that they, these companies will treat hackers that report security issues uh, well and, and that they will respond to them uh, in a decent way. <coughs> However, um, all those uh, policies they published were well, quite, you know, they varied quite a lot. You saw there was no real coordination except for the fact that they will all publish it. So I decided to uh, just review them on my blog and just mark, uh, I had a list of some properties I think I thought were important and just put check boxes for each company. Well, at, at this stage they probably were a bit scared to talk to me so I couldn't just, uh, I thought it would be better if I could just uh, talk to them in advance, but I needed to do it publicly in my blog because they didn't want me to uh, talk to them privately. But I saw pretty quickly within I think a, a few days or a week or two weeks that most companies were changing their, their po policies just to get a little bit, a few more checkboxes on my uh, on my blog post, right, to update it. And that was pretty nice to see that, that these big companies, just some random blog for nobody, uh, nobody has heard about, they were actually reading it. But one thing was clear, more coordination is needed because you get all kinds of different implementations and 
It's a bit like the open source licenses. Everybody inventing their own license. It's, uh, it's it can be fun, but it's confusing, and you don't know what to expect. And maybe people don't really understand copyright laws, or they make mistakes, or in this case, they don't understand how hackers work or what they like. Or so. Um, so there was an example was needed. Then came the National Cybersecurity Center. Center. It's part of the Ministry of Security and Justice. Uh, they published a guideline for uh, implementing a responsible disclosure policy. It's together of the, in, in, yeah, in coordination with companies, hackers, and all kinds of different people from the government, they wrote down a few of a list of things to think about uh, as a company, as a government, when implementing uh, a policy like this, a responsible disclosure policy. This was not law, this was a good thing to do. So this really helps in convincing companies they should at least look at it and that there's sensible people who thought it through and probably also lawyers and people who understand more about policy than I do. And then there were quite a few companies that were say, yeah, that, that get, got in touch with me and saying, well, it's an interesting idea, but do you have some examples? And I can mostly uh, point to American companies, uh, and, and that's about it. Except for one Dutch company, this Marktplatz, that has a responsible disclosure program, I don't know for how long, but they were way before this all um, started. Um, so I could point to Marktplatz and yeah, to the, the, the NCSC uh, guidelines. Those were, weren't really practical, more suggestions. So I created responsibledisclosure.nl, it's a website, really simple. It's basically uh, just a page of uh, text that companies can copy and paste, uh, put their own company name in it and, and use. That's only the, 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 the public part of, of the policy. The hard part is actually implemented in your company. Um, I've seen mistakes where companies thought, well, that's a great idea, just copy paste text and we're done. And then, yeah, you end up in with them just, uh, for example, promising they will respond within three days to all uh, reports mailed to this email address. And you mail them there and then you get no response. Um, so the hard part is actually implementing this in your company and making sure you can respond in time. And uh, for example, if you rely on some third party vendor of some software or hardware, can create a huge delay in, in response times. So you sh should take that all in, uh, into account. And just don't, don't point hackers to your help desk because that's just wrong, that <laughs> goes weird in all kinds of ways. And the gist of the text is basically that companies have a, a clear point of contact, something like security at company name dot nl or uh, preferably with the PHP key. Um, uh, I, I, I wouldn't want uh, security uh, problems of mine to be mailed uh, in plain text. Um, explain what kinds of systems or what kind of data is accept acceptable and not acceptable under the, under the policy. Uh, that can mean all kinds of different things. So you can, as a company, you can't um, give permission to anyone to just hack each other's user accounts. You can, however, say, well, if there's a problem with user accounts, 
just create a new account or uh, use your own account to prove a point, but don't touch anybody else's account. Uh, you can also say, well, this only uh, applies to this line of products of ours, but not our main website, because that's host then at some web hosting company that we don't have control over. We can't give permission for you to go hack that site. Um, so there's all kinds of issues like that that you have to think about as a company. Um, and I explained that to the and on the website that companies should uh, think about it. Um, and I think for the hackers, most importantly, that the comp I sh try to convince companies that they should explain what reporters of issues can expect from the company. Um, so no legal action uh, is, I think, the most important. Uh, so the statement, well, if you follow these rules we lay down, just don't touch that stuff, uh, do it like this, and uh, report it here when you find it. Uh, if you do that, we won't sue you or report you to the police. And also response times, uh, and maybe afterwards, after it's fixed, the company can give you some public credits on some page from uh, our hero hackers who have tr improved, helped improve our systems, or maybe a bug bounty. And the bug bounty is a uh, is an interesting uh, discussion, also uh, from a legal standpoint, because you don't, yeah, you can't always um, actively. Uh, uh, how do you, uh, actually, you, you, you can't all, yeah, if you give a bug bounty, you're, uh, you're, uh, outlooking, I forgot the English word, provoking, you cannot, you can't always provoke people to, to hack the system, Some, sometimes, yeah, you, you can say, well, if you just happen to stumble upon something, that, that's okay, um, but if you're actually actively handing out money, to to uh, people to try to hack you, Th that can be uh, a legal uh, issue, uh, or maybe you, you just don't want that as a company. I think well, I myself think it can be really beneficial, but uh, there's yeah some people who think differently. Um, but from the standpoint of uh, of when I think of the, the these young kids, that. Don't really, yeah, bug bounties are nice for them. Get some cash when they found, uh, find security problems. But just a, a weird t-shirt or some goodies or uh, 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 I think Mark Plants now gives out uh, white hats uh, for people who report security issues. Stuff like that, it's just unique and you can show off to your friends, look what I got, I hacked Mark Plants and I got a white hat. That's pretty cool because most of the, the, the kids that start out this way, they want to brag about stuff. They don't do it for the huge amounts of money, most of them. They just think it's cool and, and they want to have show something to their friends. And this can be a really good mo motivation to, to pull them well, to, to the, the white side, to, to help them improve companies and society. Um, so this, this is something I always explain to, to companies. Well, there's not, professional hackers aren't going to hack you because you give out free t-shirts. Um, but people who do find security problems often think it's really nice to get a, a t-shirt. So that, that helps. Next time they find something, they, they will immediately just mail you and there's already a good relationship. Um, I have here a list of, comp of not only companies, but there's one municipality of Am Amersfoort. Now these companies have a responsible disclosure program. Um, 
there's more companies that are thinking about it uh, internally, discussing the, with their lawyers, and, and others say well, reject it. And but as you see, as you can see, there's pretty big IT companies, uh, security company, Fox IT, Gemeente Amersfoort is, is a, of the municipality of Amersfoort is a bit of an outlier here. But I think someone in their uh, local government said, well, we should do this. And I said, yeah, well, OK. And they didn't really take their time. But it's really good that they're enthusiastic, enthusiastic about it and just go ahead and do it. Um, so I'll, I'd like to see this list just grow. And I'm not going to, to, to keep tabs on who uh, who uses a, who has a responsible disclosure policy and who hasn't but I hope to see this list growing um, and recently um, I think the the final piece of the puzzle of of, of the yeah the hacker government and company uh, triangle uh, came out with a letter. Um, actually, it was uh, an internal memo, internal letter that was leaked to Breno de Winter. He wrote about it. Didn't really like what it said. So he wrote a pretty negative uh, piece about it. And the public prosecutor, or the OM, Open Bar Ministry, decided to publish the letter. It's now there was yeah there were people talking about it but nobody had the real the real letter so they probably decided it's wise to just get it out there and have people discussing the actual letter um the letter is pretty hard to read for a non legal person um and it, i can understand the 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 impression it gives uh it it the first Two times I read it, came across pretty negatively. It's just, well, whatever you do, we can just prosecute anyway, uh, no matter what a company promises. Um, that was the impression it left on me. But I think the third time I read it, uh, there were some nuances. Uh, because if you think about it, um, well, I'll get to that. Um, there were a few, st yeah. Basically, the, the 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 statement that was the most problematic for a lot of people uh, was that even after hackers just honestly report an, a security issue and the company says it's fine, the public pros uh, prosecutor can say, well, we're going to going to prosecute anyway. Um, they can do that. But if you read it in, in this context, it doesn't come across very nice. But I'll explain later why, uh, well, what I think about it. Um, there was another statement. There's no responsible disclosure if the company has no responsible disclosure policy. I don't know where they got it. But um, f from what I... Uh, understand from from how responsible disclosure is because I don't, didn't invent it uh, how it came about is that you as a hacker find a problem and instead of just publishing it immediately just first report it to the company give them time to fix it and after they fix it you you, you can publish it or if they don't fix it in a reasonable time you can published anyway, or at least uh, part of your findings to, to push the company to f with some yeah, PR to fix it anyway. So there's uh, yeah, one of the two paths where the company doesn't behave uh, nicely to their customers and uh, refuses to fix a problem was left out by the public prosecutor. But one thing they said what was when, uh, well, when they uh, think about a, a case, uh, the the proportionality and subsidi 
the subsidiarity are important factors. So they take into account that you uh, just only hacked your own account to prove a point, or um, yeah, but or you had no other way of convincing them uh, that there was a problem uh, because yeah, you tr you tried saying, well, if I put an accent here in my name, it gives a or a quote in my name, it gives gives a MySQL error. If they don't respond, well, you sometimes can say, well, it's reasonable that you just say um, uh, uh, quote or one is one just to prove a point. That's SQL injection. And strictly by law, that can be illegal. But and the public prosecutor can say, well, it was the minimal amount of wrong you could do to prove your point. And we take it into account. Um, then there's, yeah, then the big question is, is this enough protection for, for yeah, for hackers, do they still have to fear prosecution? Because the letter s s clearly says, well, we can prosecute anyway. And for me, it's about trust. And I try to, to, to explain this by example um, of a bicycle thief. Or maybe you're not a bicycle thief. But the pu public prosecutor can't promise you uh, they're not going to prosecute you for bicycle theft if you didn't steal a bicycle. Because the person who has to answer the question, did you steal the bicycle, is the judge. And the judge comes after the investigation by the public prosecutor. So that's a the public prosecutor can't depend on a question the judge is going to answer after the, the investigation. So they can only say, well, we have a suspicion and we're going to uh, investigate. And the same, uh, it's a similar problem to what hackers are afraid of. But the, the line is much more gray and, and that's the problem. And day-to-day -day life, I have a reasonable trust that I'm not going to get prosecuted for bicycle theft. Maybe if I'm going, with, uh, going uh, through the streets with the bolt cutter and uh, uh, all kinds of tools to steal bikes, maybe I get some suspicion. Um, but I have to, yeah, most people have to trust that they're, they don't look suspicious. It's not black and white. Even if you're innocent, you can get prosecuted. But most of the time, it will go well. And and I think this is a problem that's really hard. There's there has to be trust here, and and a lot of hackers don't have it. But I think I hope uh, if we give it time, that there's will be at least be an answer to. Can we trust the public prosecutor to, to do this in a way we find acceptable? Because I only know of one case where the judge has um, recently uh, has had a verdict about a, a hacker, and it was one of our uh, parlim uh, members of parliament, and Kroll. And that was before the responsible disclosure guideline. But you, if you could read, have read the verdict, uh, it was pretty explicit about most important points in the responsible disclosure uh, guideline. So there you say, uh, see the the, ju the judge taking into account uh, that that it's uh, in benefit for society for him to show that that there's a pro security problem and that he went too far. Uh, in showing it. Um, I, I, I don't know a lot more about it than what the judge uh, in the said in his verdict. But that sounds reasonable to me. Uh, and he, he got, a, a, I think, a small fine of a few hundred euros or something. 750 euros. 
Um, so that shows at least that the judge, judge takes it into account or can take it can take it take it into account so now what uh we're not there yet there's lots of things to do um there's a few things i want to to ask people here in in the audience if companies have have a responsible disclosure policy you find a bug just reward them by actually reporting the bug companies that have that policy i assume would like you to they think it's valuable and when there's a company that doesn't have a responsible disclosure pro program and you're reporting a bug just ask about it well do you have somewhere where you state how you're going to respond to this because I'm not really sure, or just it's convenient for the other people coming next, the uh, next people who find a, a problem might want to know in advance what to expect. And this, this gives a signal to companies that it's important for them to, to at least state that they're open to, to hackers. And then there's the organizations that don't really behave well you can point them to the National Cybersecurity Center and say, well, it's the government suggesting you could act in a different way. Maybe you should think about it. And uh, just like with me, I'm just some random guy. Why should I listen to me? But if you point them to this document, they might listen. Just say, well, put it, uh, give this to your boss as a suggestion. Let's see. Oh, pre doing pretty good in time. Um, for organizations, it's pretty simple. Just adopt a responsible disclosure policy um, and think about how you implement it and execute it. The public prosecutor, I would still like them to talk to me and just let me explain how hackers think and 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 what responsible disclosure is really about and, and I want them to not scare the, the, the little hackers and just be open to them and, and invite them to behave nicely instead of being yeah scary and, 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 and strict. And politicians, and we actually have one in the audience here. Um, I think they have the, a really difficult challenge because I don't know if this can be solved in a good way. But there are some obvious problems, I think, in, in, in current law because there has to be this gray area that can't be in another... Yeah, it has to be like that. But it could be... Maybe it could be improved. I've heard some suggestions. I think most of them don't work because the way fundamentally our 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 society works by the, uh, the public prosecutor and uh, the, what I explained about the judge that answers uh, the guilt question of uh, in the end, not before the investigation. But m most of the suggestions try to mess with that, but that's almost impossible in our uh, society. But <laughs> I, I see maybe there's options, but I, I, I'm really I, I want to know and I want to help if I can. But um, so yeah, I want to invite you all for discussion and cooperation. Email uh, here or some other day here at the event. Um, I understand there's. Uh, there's uh, some discussion on uh, Omroep. Uh, tonight in the TV show, I didn't know about that. Okay, and tomorrow too, tonight and tomorrow. 
Okay, so <laughs> try to to participate or because uh, uh, are you still uh, trying to? Uh, that's uh, So for all Okay, yeah, I, no, I, I don't think I, I okay, the, the, uh, yeah, I, I don't think I disagree, I don't, I just think I don't know a good solution yet. Uh, I, I, I don't, uh, yeah, d don't think it's there's no possible solution. It's just that it's really complicated. So everybody who wants to help, write a new law about how to treat hackers. Then this is your chance. Uh, I think we should get a microphone. Oh, okay. Uh, it's here, and this is slide number four. Well, this is more quick. Just help write a new law with the politicians that's already in Parliament. <laughs> A large problem here is educating judges. Uh, it's, uh, you see this problem also in finance. It's extremely specialized material, and somehow we have to have judges that actually know about computers um, in any kind of way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, likewise for finance. Ah, that's better. So I think that's that's a, it's a, a huge problem in general with the legal system here and in most uh, most countries. But uh, this is a serious risk. I mean. You might consider not actually reaching out to a company or not actually disclosing something if it's big enough, because you you might get misunderstood. Yeah, and and I I, I, I um, think I agree in a, no a large part, but um, I think there's a lot to be gained um, with just changing the the at least. The image of hackers with with lawyers and, and and public prosecutors and police and getting them to understand somehow that there's also just hackers who want to help that don't necessarily uh, wear a suit and a tie and charge um, I don't know 100 euros per hour uh, but just stumble upon stuff that need to be fixed and. I think there's not many people having conversations with judges and and, and, uh, and police people explaining them this. It's just random people who want to help. And and I think that that's well, at least if, if you have this, you're always you're halfway there at least. Uh, and just the initial the the the, the preconceptions of, of the judge. Just you're a hacker. You're wrong. If you find an SQL injection, you're actively trying to hack. That's that's a misconception. I think a lot of people have that that uh, yeah that can be, I think, solved partly. Yeah, I, partly. I, I, I think the social misconception is a large part, and that's sort of where you're aiming at. But this is also a bit like um, a judge who's never seen a bicycle who has to judge about bicycle theft. That's uh, that's true, but I think that's um, more nuanced and another problem, but harder to solve. So, Floor, thank you for your uh, talk. I was wondering about the following. You make a very clear distinction between the politicians and the ministry and the public prosecutor and the judge. And, um, well, for one thing, I don't think that all the hackers know the distinction between these four forces. And for another, um, I'm not exactly sure um, whether they know what their um, their guarantees are there. So um, 
yes, the government is talking about uh, policy which should be implemented and uh, how we should approach this, but does a hacker even understand what's going on or should they make a more concise total part because the subsidiarity and the proportionality which you mentioned are indeed a very important part of public pro uh, of uh, criminal prosecution but that's nowhere in the uh, entire guideline that's yeah I, I totally agree I just uh, for myself I, I expect yeah I, I, I thought the the problem was bigger with companies that the, the first part has to be the companies who have to change at least a little bit and that's one of the next things I want to do just do something to, to explain to, to hackers how to behave and and, and this talk is uh, I think a uh, start of that um, but yeah that, that's also a problem that needs to be solved like, like I said just an ongoing development um, I have a, a small remark to make. Um, you advise to uh, reward companies that have a responsible disclosure uh, policy by reporting bugs. Yeah. I would strongly advise against finding the bugs um, because no matter how tiny, no matter how large, there is still a risk attached to it since uh, a responsible disclosure is not a permit to hack and to discover the bugs. Um, it's only when you report them and it's only from that point in time onward that it's actually covered by the responsible disclosure guidelines uh, from the NCSC. So there's always this gap in between where uh, you found the security uh, problem and you haven't reported it yet. In between, it's quite risky. Um, also, um, there would be a simple quick fix for responsible disclosure uh, policies. Um, simply, um, permit people explicitly to investigate your systems. Because if you do that, it's no longer just a responsible disclosure policy, um, then it's actually no longer um, the, the criminal offense as described in Article 138AB, as in uh, computer verdebreuk. Um, how do you translate that? Uh, breach of computer Computer Peace? fraud and abuse <laughs> act is the American uh, equivalent, I think. But okay. it's not really comparable. So, but if you have permission, then it's no longer that criminal offense. And then all of a sudden, it's no longer risky for the hacker. So instead of saying, if you do this and then report it, then we won't. Okay, that's just very complex. Instead, just say, you are allowed to do this. And that would make a uh, hacker's life so much better. I, I, I think... Um, Part of the responsible disclosure policies that I'm trying to get companies to adopt is a short piece of text explaining you can do this, but you can't do that. And that comes as close as possible to uh, per giving permission. If a company has on their website a text that say, well, you can try to do this, but don't try to do this, well, that's, uh, to me, it's almost as good as permission. Uh, to, uh, for lawyers, it, it's not really perfect. Um, uh, but, yeah, you, you can't give written permission to each random individual who might... Uh, you. It's like some companies do is they, um, I don't know if there's, this is being done at the moment, but I know it's, ha it's happened in the past that companies write out a hackathon on a clone of a system they're running that doesn't yep. contain any valuable information and that way they can find bugs without any risk uh, to the hackers or to the company. But that wasn't uh, my question. Uh, my question was... Um, Shouldn't we put more effort into explaining what hackers are? Because I've had an experience where I was, um, well, considered guilty by association because, well, I found out a security problem um, and it was at my previous school and they said, well, 
you are uh, malicious because you're a member of the hacker space. They didn't, uh, well, the, the way they put it was because you're a member of that hacker club. So they looked me up on the internet, I guess, and they discovered that and then they tried to use it against me. I think it's still a very current problem that the meaning of the word hacker is not clear across yeah. the nation and the world. And you know, that, that was, um, I think, the, the, sa the same as, as uh, uh, what I was explaining earlier. Um, and, and for me, the, the focus now is, is explaining the public prosecutor and, and maybe some, some judges what hackers are. Because that's, if it's really serious, it, it will end up there. Um, for me, I don't know a scalable way to, to, to explain all different tiny companies. I once reported a, a security incident to um, uh, a Bolle Quaker, an agricultural company. They don't know anything about hackers. So I, can, you, I, I don't know how to explain to all comp companies like that what hackers are. But the problem you, you state is I totally agree. Uh, I just try to focus on the the the, the yeah the, the easy wins, uh, whereas there's yeah, most to gain with with limited time. I agree. I think if you manage to convince uh, those people that when you when they try to contact, for example, the police, and the police tells them, well. Um, do your research first and check if it's really a malicious person um, before taking it too seriously. I, I, I don't know if the comes. police can say that, I don't know, but... Well, I know the police does this with other types of crime that they say like, um, example, when someone thinks a, a person has been abducted, they have to wait a certain amount of time to prove that the person is not just... Um, temporarily unavailable somewhere. Um, I think with hacking you can do the same. Uh, a person has to be able to make a strong case that it was uh, malicious intent uh, mm -hmm. to be able to um, report someone as a criminal. That way you will also get that effect that the companies um, get the information about hackers because they're, well, when they uh, come into contact with it, they will learn from it this way. Yeah, then, then you end up in the, with a problem that you know, my mom can get hacked, she should be able to, to uh, report to the police, but she can't make a strong argument that it was malicious. Um, it, just, I, I don't know, it's, it's difficult. Uh, I'd I, I, I like to hear f valuable suggest uh, yeah, suggestions, maybe try to help with a uh, crowdsourced new law. So yeah, m maybe if uh, have a, uh, a, a time and a place or a URL or something that we can go to uh, f for that, or just pay attention to Omroep of. Uh, ah, okay. Still work in progress, uh, I understand, yeah. yeah. So maybe you can summarize what, what she said. Oh, um, yeah, it, it's still work in progress. Uh, still has there's some cooperation about how to, you know, uh, finding out if it's possible and how to do it. And uh, there's no definitive, uh, definitive date or time or website or uh, so is there any important question? I see two people there. In the meantime, I say you can also go to a journalist and ask to hide, s to cover your ass. It means yeah. to do a source protection or go to a lawyer. I don't really agree with the first part, but... Um, yeah, okay, we can discuss about it. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I, ju I just wanted to mention that, um, to, to maybe continue the discussion, we, uh, we have a village set up. It's called Hackers Without Borders, Hackers on the Grenze, to, to try and... Um, well, make sort of an uh, initiative to uh, ease responsible disclosure. So, so make it easier to act as a legal proxy, like the gentleman said there. Um, 
try and have a sort of an agreement with a company that they want to be hacked and then it would be perfectly legal no. and not have the, uh, uh, well, the, the, the things you just mentioned about responsible disclosure as a policy, the, the, the steps before it, you would want to be, uh, uh, make that legal. That's great. Wh where are you located? For We're in between T1 and T2. Okay, great. So uh, just yeah. tag along for the discussion. Thanks. So any date and time for the discussion right now? Just whenever. Whenever. That's best. Is there coffee? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and coffee and beer. Well, um, I think we should try to end it. It's um, five minutes before. OK. So I would like to thank Floor for his presentation. And I think he's available for further discussion. Officially, you sh should go to the um, media cafe. Okay. Officially. I'll That's have to find out do what whatever it is, you want. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no. Thank you.